Good evening and welcome back to the Space Shuttle Flight Control Room. And I have another one of our flight controllers with me this evening. And this is Bill Foster and he is with GC, not GNC. There's a difference. Uh, he's with the ground control. So I'm going to talk with Bill this evening and find out a little bit about him. I actually kind of know a little bit about Bill because he's very active in the public affairs office. He does a lot of volunteer work, but we'll talk about that in a second. So tell me, Bill, what do you do for GC? So good evening on that. Uh, ground controller is responsible for the building itself, for the mission control center, the complex, and all of the network interfaces that we use to communicate with the spacecraft. We support both the space shuttle and the space station, and uh, also support a lot of the international projects with the uh, Japanese HTV, the European ATV, and uh, all of our international partners. So we're involved with whatever it takes to communicate with spacecraft and to keep this center going so that we can watch the telemetry, we can send commands, we can talk to our astronauts in space. So what's the coolest part of your job? Because you've been telling me about all this good stuff. Really, it's just being part of history, just being part of this team. When you've worked here in this room and you've dealt with the people that, that are just incredibly trained, you know, a lot of people look at movies like Apollo 13 and they, they look at flight controllers and see these are incredibly intelligent people and we're not. You know, we're, we're pretty much average people, you know, obviously with some education. I'm going to beg to differ on that one. But we are incredibly well trained. We do a lot of simulations. We work with procedures a lot. We, we are constantly double thinking and what could go wrong with the, all the what if scenarios so that when we actually come in and sit on console, we've done this time after time in training purposes. We've had a team of trainers that have thrown failures at us time after time after time. And, and when I talk to the to the public a lot of times, I like to say we're sort of like Pavlov's dog. You know, we're so trained, they ring a bell and we drool. So you've been doing this time after time. How many time after times have you done this? A number of ascent and entry related sims has got to be in the hundreds. I've been doing this since 1997. I actually started working out here in, in an engineering position back in 1980, but I've moved into the ground control office in 1997. I've done, supported 43 missions so far. Uh, 41 of them is an ascent and entry position. So do you like ascent and entry better than working on the planning? There's a difference between the planning shift and ascent and entry. So tell me which one's the, your favorite? Well, in, any shift on console, is better than a great day in the office. Well, that's um, pretty interesting. So, so it doesn't matter which shift it is, it's it's always interesting. There's always things that go on. I, this is my second of two relief shifts on the planning shift. After tonight, I go back off the mission until we get ready for entry late Monday night for our landing minus one day shift. Then on um, Tuesday night, come in for the entry shift. Um, but obviously my favorite part is working ass in entry. You know, the, the, the big joke among us that work that is that, you know, we don't really understand what we do in the orbit part of the mission. We're just going around in circles. You know, you, you, you launch and then you're just waiting to land. Okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself now. I mean, we know a little bit about your job. What, are you from here? Where are you from? Originally from Beaumont, but I grew up in the Houston area. Uh, right now, live with my wife of 25 years and two of our kids in LaPorte, so about 10 miles north of here. Uh, we've been out there for just about 25 years. Uh, again, grew up in Houston. Uh, Where'd you go to school? Went to school, got my degree at University of Houston, Clear Lake, and a physics degree in electro-optics. That's a little bit different. You said you were an engineer when you first came out here. How did you go from physics to engineering? Well, when you get a degree in electro-optics in 1980, there's not a lot of places in the country that actually did anything with it. What's electro-optics anyway? Explain at, that to at, us. At, at the time, it was dealing with anywhere from high-powered lasers, uh, research in laser theory. Uh, fiber optics was just really coming to be at that time, so it wasn't a big industry yet. And really, the, the good jobs were on the east and the west coast. Now, fortunately, University of Houston Clear Lake is right out the back door of Johnson Space Center. Uh, one of my co-workers had gotten, uh, my co-students had gotten a job at Ford Aerospace, one of the contractors responsible for mission control. And that was before the shuttle had started flying. We were, they were looking for almost any warm body with a degree. 
So when I found out he had gotten a job, I called the person he did, and I came to work as a data communications engineer. So you didn't Porter's start as a co-op student? No, 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 straight out as a as an engineer. That actually doing nothing related to my degree, but the degree did get me the job. So tell me again what you did because I interrupted you. I'm sorry. As an engineer, I was responsible for a lot of the the terminal systems in the control center. So I would write out engineering instructions, how these things had to be installed. I would write out procurement specifications, what materials were needed to work a project, and then would work with the technicians in the control center to actually get the equipment installed, tested, and then maintain it later. Uh, so Bill is one of the folks that we see a lot in public affairs. He does a lot of volunteer work for us. Tell me and tell our viewers exactly some of the exactly what you do for PAO. You you go out and volunteer and so tell me what you do. Well I go out and do some speaking engagements, not a lot of them out in public, but a lot of that is I don't get asked a lot. I, I do interact with the public as they come in on a regular basis, talk to the uh, tourists from Space Center Houston, they'll They'll come up into the viewing room and I'll go chat with them on what we're doing and, and it's really interesting hearing their perspective. You know, these are the people that pay our salaries and it's neat that they're willing to travel here to spend the amount of money they spend in some cases uh, to come and see what we do. Uh, other things, you know, we have a lot of visitors, you know, special visitors that come here that, that your, your group escorts in, you know, some some very famous people. He gets to talk to all the really famous people and all of all of the VIPs. But what I generally do, because one of my parts of my position is I control the front screens, is I'll set up displays that welcome them into the control center. You know, when I first became a GC, I had a trip out to the uh, Goddard Space Flight Center to their network control center. And when we walked into the room, the network director had arranged to have, it was about four of us from JSC, had our names up on their big screen. And as you walk in and you look and you see your names up, that's kind of a wow factor. So ever since then, I try and do that for our visitors that come in, build yep. up a nice graphic, have their names up, a welcome to the control center. And it's kind of funny every now and then when you'll later see stuff on the internet where they've posted things and that picture is frequently one of the things that they post. So tell us somebody famous that you've seen here and that you've talked with. Uh, Joe Walsh you know, from the Eagles was here, had a chance to meet him and, and uh, give him a few mementos from the control center and then he gave me a cap. You know, he was in town doing concerts. There's a lot of the baseball teams where the players will come in. Uh, president Bush came in, the, uh, this is the former President Bush, uh, the first one. Uh, a couple of days after the Columbia accident, had a chance to talk with him and show him some of our displays and, and things along those lines. You occasionally get members of royalty here. So is that a favorite part of your job? Interacting with the public, whether they're the, the VIPs or just the people that come in through Space Center Houston is one of the favorite things that I like to do. It's, it's energizing to, to talk to them. But one of the more interesting ones is there's a, a school from uh, South Korea that comes in on a regular basis. Different kids but the same organizers bring them in and when they come in you're a rock hero to them. I mean they they listen to you, they has to be translated for them but they'll listen and then afterwards they want their picture taken with you, they want your autograph and it's just it, it's neat to see the excitement and the enthusiasm and, and every now and then think that you're talking to people that you really hope are going to be working with you someday in the future. I think it probably, I think you're right, Bill. It is very important that uh, we do some outreach to the community. And every time you talk to somebody that's not working at NASA, and it doesn't matter if you're a public affairs officer or a ground controller or any of the posi many positions here, when you get to talk to the public, it's, it's always very special because you, you like to share, this is a great place to work. And we, we all seem to really have a good time. It's very serious work, but uh, we enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely agree. It is it is very serious, but at the same time, again, as I said earlier, it's part of history. It's it's just amazing to look around sometime and realize that I'm actually working here. Now our viewers can't see Bill's tie, but I've been admiring it. I was admiring it earlier, and it has all. Of, tell me a little bit about your tie. You've got all of the different missions on it. It's got a lot of mission emblems from the early missions, from the Apollo Gemini missions. It, it's more of a history tie, and it's 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 one of my favorite ties. Uh, for in many cases, I make it my launch tie. We, we have our superstitions here that 
you know, if we're not wearing the right thing, then that's why we didn't launch if we didn't launch. Uh, this tie has been, it's, it's got about a 50-50 track record. Well, that's a pretty good track record. Do you have anything else that you want to share with our viewers, Bill? Well, one, I appreciate everyone watching this. This is not always the most exciting program in the world, and I know people like Lynette do everything they can to try and pass information on. But, you know, in a lot of cases, you're just staring at people apparently doing nothing or stuffing their faces, although we do try and keep an eye on the TVs and, and not eat when we know we're on. Uh, but I do appreciate everyone that supports the space program. You know, we're hoping to... Uh, to fly out the shuttle program very safely and, and do it, uh, in my case, as long as it takes. Hopefully we're not finished too soon, but uh, once that happens, I'll also go over and support our space station side of the house. Well, Bill is absolutely right. This is a work environment, so when we invite you into Space Shuttle Flight Control Room or the International Space Station Flight Control Room, this is our work environment. So you may see people here sitting at their desk and you think, well, they're not doing anything, but uh, if you're actually listening on these headsets, you would know there's lots of conversations going on, multitudes of conversations going on, sometimes at the same time. So it can be a, a, a kind of a daunting experience your first time, but uh, Bill's a pro here because he's been doing it for quite some time. I want to thank you again, Bill, for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, this is Mission Control Houston. <laughs>